I looked at quite a few different options to heat this building. I have done, uh, a, created a thermodynamics model that takes into consideration all of the heat transfer, uh, conduction, convection, radiation, uh, including uh, ground heat, the uh, heat in the fish ponds, additional heat that I put into fish ponds through uh, tank boilers, uh, the heat coming from underneath uh, of the tanks from the digester or, or the heating system that I showed in a previous video, um, the, the, the material properties of the plastic, of the covering of the building, and it actually is within one degree Fahrenheit of accuracy. So that actually, uh, you know, it's been, oh my goodness, uh, I've, uh, it's been over 10 years since I was in college. Uh, after college, I was a systems engineer. Uh, I graduated as an aerospace engineer with focus in space studies, of course. Um, and then went in the Air Force, did systems engineering, then project management, program management. So it's been a while since I got to do a bunch of engineering like this. Um, so I was impressed. Uh, it took me quite a few days to uh, remember all the equations, get all my books out, dust them off. So uh, folks in college, uh, make sure you keep all of your textbooks. It's very important. Don't sell them like me. You'll end up buying them again if you want to be an engineer. So keep all of them. Anyway, I got the model put together, ran it all the way down to 8 Fahrenheit, and uh, Right now, we're within a degree of accuracy of what it forecasted, so that's pretty good. That allowed me to do some calculations regarding how much heat we needed uh, in each of the grow lanes, and the answer to that question is 40,000 BTU for those of you that would like to do some math and check me out. Oh, I'm sorry, 20,000 BTU per lane per hour, 40,000 BTU total will keep me above freezing even down to 8 Fahrenheit with the setup that I have in here. Uh, just above freezing when it's this cold. So. Uh, I chose to go with a barrel stove, but it's a hybrid barrel stove. It's actually what I'll call a barrel mass heater stove. Uh, like the rocket heater that many of you have uh, offered that I should go look at, I did look at it, spent about three days of research looking at it. And, you know, the bottom line, uh, they are more efficient than double barrel wood stoves, no doubt about that. Uh, the mass heating effect we took, that's a great idea, and that's why we put our uh, barrel stove deep down into the ground. So there is the barrel stove. And way, way back there, there's actually a ventilation system on both sides that sucks air out. So that's a six foot deep hole. Uh, hand dug it myself, took me about a day. Uh, we talked about it on the Wrangler Star. Uh, check out his videos if you're new to my site and haven't been to his. He's an awesome guy, does great things. Uh, you'll really enjoy his videos. Uh, so we're, we're using the mass heating property. Everything is covered with rock on top and dirt. So there's a lot of mass there to help hold that heat in. Um, so I really like that about the mass heater. What I didn't like about the rocket stoves, the feeding. Put simply, I put that much wood in twice a day on a normal winter day. On days like this, we actually really need to be doing it three if not four times. On all the rocket stove designs that i found, you have to chop every single one of those uh, up with the ax and uh, into almost kindling size. And that's just simply way too much work. It is way too much work. So while they are more efficient, uh, the designs are simple, they simply take way too much time and in the long run, wood stove, uh, rocket stove, double barrel stove, it doesn't matter. Uh, none of them are going to be the long-term solution, uh, especially when we go to Mars because there ain't no trees up there. Um, you could get human waste, you could get it dry enough, uh, and you could potentially burn it, but I don't know off the top of my head. That's purely speculation, uh, but I doubt they'd want to do that. Anyway, um, so... Put the double barrel stove in, had some problems with the chimney. I originally ran it uh, not coming up out of the ground like this, but I ran it horizontal underneath the ground and out through the, the building. Uh, underneath the building, excuse me. So this time I'll show you the same path, only where it went underground. Here we go. So it would come up right there and it went 90, but that would be all underground. And then it would come out 
it would go out underground and then we'd go up outside up 20 feet out there to get the proper draft. Uh, some problems with that. One, uh, drainage. The water was seeping in around the pipe so you had to seal it. I used cement. It ended up working um, but it was a pain. Uh, two, slope. Rise over run. The angle of the pipe. I didn't get a good angle of the pipe and the reason I didn't get a good angle of the pipe is because the more steep you put the angle the more water that wants to run down it. Water follows the path of least resistance so I ended up trying to get it as flat as possible if not with a little bit like this and all you chimney guys out there I know you're laughing right now I, <laughs> I, I was trying to solve many many problems with one thing and it just didn't work. So it wouldn't draft I got smoked out every single time I loaded it um, and I ripped it all up and I put it inside. Um, some of you have asked me how come you're not using double wall uh, pipe? Number one and most important money. Uh, <laughs> I know I bring that up a lot so let me just say this we cashed out our retirement and we put it all on the line for this thing. Um, so when I say we spent all of our money I, I really actually mean we put it all on the line. Uh, I'm not just saying it. Uh, there's no grants here. We we did all of this, and it's took it took us a long time. So um, when I say it's because of money, I, I I'm, I'm not just saying it because I'm asking you for it or anything. I'm saying it because that that is legitimately the problem. Uh, all the ideas, for example, that people have given, which are so amazingly awesome. Uh, I would love to do them all. Uh, I would love to try them all. I'd love to experiment and record and send you guys the results of all those things. That would be fun to me. That would be a lot of fun. And we'd learn so much together and we'd move towards our goal of getting to Mars uh, and helping people here on Earth. Um, but unfortunately, the reality of the situation is I'm short on time and I'm short on money. And that means I have to find ways to do things. Um, I guess I'd call it eloquent, right? It's a solution. It may not be the best engineering solution, but if it works, it works. So uh, I couldn't go with double wall insulation because it's just too expensive. Um, the second thing is I actually want the heat off of the pipe. So you can't see, but right now this pipe is pretty hot there. You can put your hand on it, but it is getting hotter and hotter because I just started it. There's a lot of heat coming off of that that actually does help heat this building just a little bit. Helps keep the inside of the building just a little bit warmer than outside, and that's important. So we want to keep that capability going. I don't. If I did a, a double wall pipe, uh, I would keep. I would have less creosote. Uh, here's, by the way, the creosote bucket. This thing fills uh, every two days, so I get about five gallons of creosote water every two days, uh, which is dehumidifying, of course, but uh, what do you do with it? Uh, if you guys got any ideas of useful ways to use creosote water, why don't you reply on uh, the comments and let's start a conversation there. Uh, anyway, so yeah, chose to go with a double barrel stove. I'll call it the double barrel mass heating stove because uh, it's a hybrid with the rocket mass stoves. Uh, in a double barrel stove. I know it's not as efficient, but really the killer on the rocket stove designs that I found. Now if you all have a big rocket stove design where you can feed it as much as I need to every day, um, then please send it to me. That would be very interesting to see. Um, some of you have also asked, what about a wood boiler? Put it outside. That's a great idea. Again, five to $8,000 in installation, which I could do myself. Uh, that's not a problem, but it just comes down to resources. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I like. I think it. I think the the boiler system would work with the uh, radiant heating, the uh, uh, water-based heating, where you circulate the water through it, or uh, a refrigerant of some sort, so it contains the heat better, uh, and then push it through a radiated fan. I think that would probably be a, a really good solution and a lot easier to load. Um, but again, it it's resources. So. Um, yeah, okay, could I have built one by myself? Probably, I found some plans online, and then the reason here is time. So I was doing all this myself, there's a big rush. Uh, we had some uh, 
friends and family come over and help. Really grateful for all their hard work. Um, but in the end, I just couldn't get to building it. So we had to go with something, again, the eloquent solution. It gave us heat, uh, and I could get it in in time, and it didn't cost too much. Those are the big factors that led to why we went this way. So um, that's why we did what we did. Uh, I know it's not perfect. Uh, hopefully you can understand these three, I mean, real world problems, right? Time, money, uh, getting everything put in there uh, with effort that I have available to me, uh, resources I have available. So, hey, if you really like what you're seeing, please provide comments about what's working and some, I like the constructive criticism that's happening. Uh, I am trying to learn how to use the camera better. I have a mic on the way, but unfortunately with the bad weather we're having, it's been delayed. So you will get better sound quality out of me. The uh, GoFundMe uh, is coming along really well. I really appreciate all you video guys out there helping give me pointers, keep them coming, I like it. Um, if you're interested in what we're doing now, uh, we're actually at the point with subscribers, thanks to all of you, that if, I think it's six out of 10 of you do donated just a dollar, it's you know, just it's one penny more than 99 cents, uh, we would actually be able to really kick this thing into gear and I could probably do a lot of what you guys are uh, offering us to do. So consider it if you can, great. If you can't, please just enjoy watching our channel. Contribute to the comments. Uh, hopefully you get a laugh. Uh, hopefully it inspires some thought. And hopefully we can all get to Mars and help the people here on Earth have sustainable food and energy. In the meantime, this is The Real Martian. Y'all have a great night.